really, really grateful. I'm grateful to be here sharing this conference with you today. Grateful to have the opportunity to present. Grateful to have some friends in the audience, friendly faces. Grateful for Madrone Studios, this amazing creative space in the city. All the innovative things that are happening here, the fantastic production team. I just feel really grateful to be alive. As Adil really um, beautifully introduced, I work with the Ecology of Leadership program at the Regenerative Design Institute in Bolinas. Um, this program was founded by James Stark and Christopher Kunch, and I'd like to give a little shout out to them. They're, James is in India right now giving a TEDx talk. Flew all the way around the world, and so it's pretty cool that I'm doing this here. And Christopher's at the Northern California Perm Permaculture Convergence. So it's just amazing how these seeds are going out all over the world. And what we specialize in is inner permaculture. So RDI has a bunch of programs that are doing the kinds of things you've heard about today, learning about gray water systems and permaculture design and reskilling and you know, all the different practices that we're hearing on the outer level. But what we look, like to look at is what happens if we look, take a look at our inner garden. So what are the shifts that need to happen on an inner level that then will create the possibility for transformation on an outer level that we really want to see? in our own lives, in our communities, and in the world. So my presentation today, I'm going to focus on what we call um, a deceptively simple but profoundly transformative practice, which is gratitude. Now, I'd like you to just imagine for a moment, what would it be like to live in a city founded upon the principle of gratitude? What would it be like if you woke up in the morning and the first thought that came to your mind was, wow, I'm just so grateful to have another day to be alive. What would it be like if, as you left the house in the morning, first person that you ran into, maybe it's your bus driver, maybe it's the barista at the local coffee shop, you're like, wow, I'm so grateful for you. I just love the way that you make those little designs on my coffee. It makes me really happy every morning. Imagine as if we went to the workplace and you talked to your colleagues and you expressed your gratitude. You know, just take that extra moment to be like, you know, I really, really am grateful for the work that you're doing. Really grateful to work at this company. Really grateful to your employees, your employer. Get home from the work at the end of a long day and express your gratitude to your spouse, your partner, your housemate. Go to bed at night with this feeling of gratitude. What would it be like if we lived in a city founded upon gratitude. Now, some might say that we actually do live in a culture that is based on gratitude. So the First Nations or indigenous peoples of this land, which I've had the fortune of working with around the world, practice Thanksgiving on a regular basis. And there's something called the Thanksgiving Address. Um, this is a poster of it that I have in my home. And it talks about all the different aspects of creation that we're grateful for, you know, ranging from the earth, to the waters, to the fish, to the trees, the plants, the sun, the moon. And so, as we ponder this you know, idea of dwelling in gratitude, I'd like you to just close your eyes for a moment and connect to something you're feeling grateful for. And I'm going to share a little song. Um, it's a gratitude song. Oh, I say thank you. Oh, oh, I say thank you. Oh, great spirit, in this way, I long to give my life to you in love and devotion, in love and devotion. Way ahead, way ahead, way ahead, oh. So just let that little bit of gratitude sink in. Hold on to it. Maybe when we're done, you can share it with your neighbor, the person sitting next to you. And I'm going to take you on a little journey into how gratitude became a really central part of my life. I was living in Canada in the midst of a very snowy winter, 
2007. There were just feet and feet of snow. And I was going through a really, really hard time in my life, you know? So I was somebody who actually had had a pretty easeful life up until that point in time. You know, things seemed to come easily to me. It wasn't really, um, I hadn't found myself in a moment of deep challenge. But there it was. You know, I had a relationship that was falling apart. I had a young baby, a year old. I was starting a PhD program. I was in a new city where I didn't know anybody. And suddenly I found myself having trouble just even getting out of bed in the morning. So every day I would wake up and I would have to struggle to find, you know, like what is the reason to get out of bed? What is it that can really help me get through the day? And as I would get out of bed, I would get dressed and get my laptop, get ready to go to school, get my snow gear on, my jacket and my toque, and get ready, my snow boots, get ready to trudge out into the wintry cold. I would root in the practice of gratitude. So I found that if I just dug deep and found the one thing that I was grateful for, I could make it. I could make it to the subway if I just focused on, I'm really grateful for my, my legs that can walk. You know, there's lots of people around the world who actually don't have that privilege. I'm really grateful for my breath, just the ability to breathe in and out. I'm grateful for my eyes that can see. I'm grateful to have arms that can hold my baby. You know, I'm just grateful. And it was that practice that really got me through those really dark and, and deep days. And you know, even though I'd worked with indigenous cultures around the world, and even though I'd been exposed to this on some level, I'd like to think that you know, I just kind of came to, to it as a, it's almost like it saved my life. You know, It was just rooting in that gratitude that got me through that time. Fast forward a couple of years, um, and I came out to California and encountered the, encountered the Ecology of Leadership program. And I was really stunned to find that gratitude was a regular part of what they were practicing in the program. So as I began my meetings with my coworkers, we would start every single meeting with gratitude. You know, imagine that. You know, you've got an hour-long meeting to take the first 10 minutes and just talk about what you're grateful for. I was kind of like, whoa, this is revolutionary. You know, but we would just go around and around, and it wasn't just one thing. You know, it was like hearing like 10, 20, 30 things that each person was feeling grateful for. And it really changed my mind in terms of what was possible in an organizational culture. And then as we started to, I was doing my PhD research on the program and its transformative impacts, I got to see in a circle of people what became possible as um, you created a culture of gratitude. So every weekend when the group gathered, everybody would sit down and think, you know, what is something that everyone in the circle is feeling grateful for? And through it, through my actual exposure to the program, I began my own daily gratitude practice in a much more formal way. Um, so I committed about a year ago to do a daily gratitude practice online on Facebook where I would post it on a daily basis and kind of tell the world what I was grateful for. And for me, that was a way of really rooting into um, a commitment. These are just some of the pictures of things I was grateful for throughout the year. Um, and what I found was that the more that I looked for something that I was grateful for, the more that every day I would find more and more things. And so it became the self-reinforcing practice where I couldn't just find one thing that I was grateful for, I would find more and more. You know, the smell of the roses as I'm walking down the street and the jasmine wafting over me and the beauty of my son helping me with the dishes. Um, you know, everywhere I looked, I would just find things to be grateful for. That's me feeling really grateful. Um, <laughs> outside of Cafe Gratitude, in fact. So what's so special about gratitude? Why is it that, I mean, this seemingly simple technology is so powerful? Now, I'd like to say that there's actual correlation between things like permaculture and gratitude in that, you know, both of these are actually not really new technologies, you know? Like, it's not surprising. You can, you've heard of gratitude before. But uh, like with permaculture, we like to say that we're on the cutting edge of a thousand-year-old technology. I think with gratitude, it's kind of the same. So this is an age-old thing, but what would it be like if we really brought this to life in our cities and cultures and families and homes and organizations today? Now, some of the principles of gratitude, uh, it's an affirmation of life itself. So it's like just that waking up in the morning to be like, I'm thankful for another day. Like, to me, that's the most um, honest and humble prayer that we can offer on a daily basis. It shifts our focus from what's negative to what's positive. So it's so easy in our culture to be critical or judging or always looking for what's wrong, what's not right, analyzing. Um, whereas gratitude just shifts the focus just a little bit, right, to find what it is that is actually positive. 
It's an opportunity for reframing. So it gives us this new lens on life. So even when something's really hard, to focus on it from the perspective of gratitude means to find what's right. So I'm really grateful, actually, that I got sick because I get this opportunity to rest and reflect and stay home and um, you know, curl up under the blankets. And it's like finding what's good about even the hard situations. And ultimately, for me, it connects me to something that's bigger than myself. So it takes me out of my own self-referential world into really opening to something bigger. Brother David um, is a monk who's created an organization, gratefulness.org. I love this quote. He says, in daily life, we must see that it is not happiness that makes us grateful, but gratefulness that makes us happy. There's a lot of recent studies about what the impacts of gratitude are on personal happiness and health. And again, it's like this is not revolutionary, but actually it could be for our personal well-being and um, health. So regular gratitude practice, that could be like just making a list of what you're grateful for on a daily basis or a weekly basis, um, contributes toward progress, toward important person, personal goals, greater alertness, enthusiasm, determination, attentiveness, and energy, better health, sleep duration, sleep quality, greater energy, optimism, and positivity, and a sense of feeling connected to others. The Greater Good Center at UC Berkeley is doing a new study on gratitude. It'll be really interesting to see what they come up with. So quote, this is the moment that you shift your mindset from this perspective of negativity and judgment to one of appreciation. Look at what happens to our bodies. So your brain function becomes more balanced, harmonized, and supple. Your heart begins to pump in a much more coherent and harmonious rhythm. And biochemical changes trigger a host of helpful responses throughout your body. So there's an actual science to this. It's like my mindfulness meditation. Um, gratitude has the same impact on your body and your brain and your heart. Studies of relationships and marriage, um, the Gottman Institute out of Washington, they say that the number one predictor of success in marriage is the level of gratitude. So if you have at least a ratio of five appreciations for every one negative comment or criticism, then you'll make it, seriously. So he said that they can predict with 90% accuracy the success of a couple after watching them for three minutes based on this interaction alone, um, which is pretty revolutionary. Like, we kind of think it should be 50-50, right? Like, at least as much positive as the negative, but actually we need to up our gratitude and appreciation of one another um, five times in order just to make it. In our families, my son, Mateo, um, and I practice gratitude with my children, and it's really amazing what they're capable of. Um, even from a young age, so my four-year-old has a much easier time with it than a seven-year-old. And we'll do rounds of gratitude, like on the way to school in the morning, or as we're getting ready to have dinner at night. Um, we'll just talk about what we're grateful for. And Mateo will go on and on, sometimes for a half an hour straight, of all the things he's grateful for. And he, um, he actually comes up with his own rules. He says, Mom, these are the rules for being grateful. I'm like, what's that? And he says, well, if you say God or ice cream, you get to go twice. Gratitude in our organizations, so this is from Cafe Gratitude, of course, which is an innovator right here in San Francisco about creating this kind of culture. Um, there's also Joie de Vivre, which is a local hotel company which has implemented gratitude into the organization. And similarly, um, Chip Conley, the head of Joie de Vivre, he said that if you just have two practices of gratefulness a day in an organization, it can shift the entire culture. So he committed personally as a CEO just to tell two people in the company that he was grateful on a daily basis and it completely sh shifted the Joie de Vivre organizational culture. So if all this is true, then why don't we practice gratitude? Why don't we do it? Um, maybe it's just deceptively simple. We think this is, you know, that's kind of a low level kindergarten sort of thing, gratitude. We don't really need to do that. Maybe we're afraid of putting ourselves out there. So like, you know, maybe it would feel kind of vulnerable to go up to the barista in the morning and be like, wow, I just really love that design on my coffee. You know, like maybe that feels like it's taking a step outside of our comfort zone that would be um, maybe a bit risky, courageous. We make assumptions, we think people already know. So like, do you think to, to thank your spouse or partner for making the bed in the morning or, you know, cleaning up after they have a meal? You know, like we just take that for granted. We think, well, they're supposed to do that, so I don't need to tell them I'm grateful. And we're also coming from these old world values of um, individualism and stinginess, competition. And so we're constantly thinking, well, 
Why would I put myself out there when they're not telling me that they're grateful for me first, right? Instead of creating this culture of generosity and giving it forward. Just leave you with some simple keys for if you want to incorporate gratitude in your life, um, some things that can really help, be it whether you want to change your own personal life or a relationship or your organization or your community. Um, number one is just to commit. So for me, the practice of saying, I'm going to do this on a daily basis and I'm going to put it out there on Facebook was really powerful, but you can um, commit just in your own personal way. But just the practice of saying, I'm going to do this, or like for Chip Conley to say, I'm going to give gratitude twice a day at my work, um, that was transformative in and of itself. Be real. So, you know, it doesn't really work if you're expressing gratitude, but you're actually not really feeling it. It has to really come from that place of feeling true and being something you genuinely notice that you're grateful for, even if it's just as simple as your breath. Number three, what you appreciate appreciates. And so what I've noticed is that the more you notice what you're grateful for, the more things you see that you're grateful for. So you're able to actually cultivate that kind of beauty in your life. So if you want to see more, you know, if I want to see my kids doing the dishes more, the more I tell them I'm grateful for it, the more they're going to do it. Four is to do it together. So it's actually really helpful to get on board with this with like your partner or your children or your organization so that you hold one another accountable because sometimes I'm not feeling that grateful so it really helps me if then my kids say hey mom you know we really should do gratitude before dinner then we can do that together and the fifth principle this is kind of a magic secret of gratitude which is that it's possible to give thanks not just for what you see and what you already have but for what's yet to come so if you really want to experience more joy and love in your life, or you really want to um, you know, live in a beautiful home in nature, to give gratitude for that as if it's already happened. And there's a secret principle of that in which gratitude actually becomes a creative act. And you draw that thing to you by giving that thanks. And it's like that total confidence of like, yes, I'm so grateful that that thing already happened. Um, and in my experience, it really works. So back to gratitude in City 2.0. I'd like to suggest that gratitude is actually the fertilizer that could really cultivate the kinds of cities that we want to live in, a resilient, regenerative community. You know, just thinking back to like what it would feel like to live in a city where this culture of appreciation and love was really pervasive, where when you're walking down the street, you have this feeling of just connection that sometimes feels really hard to attain in the city. But I know that like for me this morning, I had done my gratitude practice as I was driving down the hill and then I stopped to get a coffee and I was walking down the street and because I was feeling really grateful then I was smiling at all these people and they were smiling back at me and it was like just by my practicing the gratitude then I was able to feel like I lived in a city that was a culture of gratitude. So as I close I'd like to invite just a little experiment um, which is that you might try this out. So as you leave here today, maybe as we go into the networking portion at the end of the day, just consider finding one thing you're grateful for and telling somebody. See what happens. Maybe you go home and you find your beloved or um, housemate at your house and you think to share something you're grateful for with that person. See what happens. And uh, my information's up there. You can be in touch. Let me know how it went for you. Um, see what becomes possible if we really take responsibility for creating regenerative communities from the inside out. Thank you.